The Block Talk podcast started because of my passion for the property management industry. I wanted to start a conversation and add some value within the industry with a diverse range of people and professionals who can add something extra. As we start out, my aim is that the podcast offers some useful insight into a variety of views, opinions, thoughts, and foresights from our guests who include business leaders and industry experts. If you enjoy the podcast and want to find out any other information, head on over to brianwelsh.co.uk. Hello and welcome to another edition of Block Talk Podcast with me, Brian Welsh and Jax Bruce. Jax, how are you today? I'm good, thanks, Brian. I'm good. Not, not so nice weather today as we're recording this, but yeah, it's, it's all good. It is. The weather is turning. Okay, so today we have a pleasure of talking to James Groves, who has been Managing Director of Indigo Swan for two and a half years. His aim is to be the best manager and leader he can be. He wants to motivate, inspire, develop, and coach people to reach their personal and professional goals whilst at the same time achieving the goals of the business. James, great to have you on. How are you doing? Brian, I am wonderful. Thank you ever so much for having me on, and Jax as well. Uh, love being here. Um, happy to be on, on, this, on this podcast with one of my favourite people from Scotland, so it's good. <laughs> Thanks for that. I'm going to repeat something I said to you just before we started recording, and that is the last time... Um, that I um, I saw you was about 11.30 at night, the night before a PMAS conference, drinking Jack Daniels and Coke. And I don't even drink Jack Daniels and Coke. So no, but it was, we, uh, we, it's, we been a, it's been a long time. We converted you that night, Brian, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've drank any since right now. Oh, well, it's a shame. We'll, we'll make up for it when we can get back up there. Yeah, yeah, let's hope so. So first first question for you, James. How yeah. How have you coped with the pandemic? And how do you think it has impacted the future role of the office? Yeah, so, I mean, I think for like like everybody, it's been challenging um, in, in a lot of different ways. From, from a business perspective, we, we, we've done well. I'm not going to sit and say that, that we haven't. We, we've done well. I've been very thankful for the understanding of, of our client base and, you know, where there has been certain challenges, you know, maybe our service levels weren't where we wanted them to be for, for, for a year and a bit. Um, but we, you know, we had their understanding. We were able to still offer a very good service. We were fortunate that a lot of our client base was in sectors that weren't necessarily as impacted by COVID as others. Um, but within, for example, the hospitality and tourism space, we, we we had a look at what we could do for them, helping them with, you know, maybe it was pausing their billing for a few months, uh, having a look at fees that were charged, and just, you know, helping out as much as we could for businesses that were maybe more impacted. But from, from an Indigo Swan perspective, uh, we had the challenge of working from home. We've never worked from home before. So on the 23rd of March, you know, that was it. We, we were simply working at home. Uh, our, our head of ops, uh, Andy, had done an amazing job plotting and predicting on a spreadsheet when we might be to work from home, and he was right. So he still dines on that, out on that to this day. Um, but we were, we were home, you know, all, all 21, 22 of us. Uh, and, and it worked fine, you know, with the help of Teams and Zoom and all that sort of stuff. It was fine. We, you know, we set up challenges. We... You know, I sent care packages out to the guys. Um, the challenges were to try and encourage people to get out their houses and exercise. And we were doing all of that sort of stuff and really trying to keep, I suppose, our, you know, our award-winning culture at Indigo Swan alive as best as we could, but in a little bit of a different way. Um, I think for me, you can't replace the culture, the collaboration and everything that comes with being together in office. That That's just not possible. You can't do that. But... There were positives. There were positives and to the degree that there were opportunities where people could just get their head down. You know, we could work on maybe some projects that, that we hadn't had the opportunity to because when everybody's together, it all just goes a bit crazy. Um, you know, we could really focus in on, on spending a little bit more time on, on, on some of our clients and some of our marketing. Uh, we launched a, a video series from TV um, and we just tried to make the most of the opportunity. Um, because I think that's what it was. There was opportunity during that time. We saw a lot of our competitors sort of almost hibernate and disappear. Uh, and for us, we very much wanted to keep a business as usual approach, to make sure that we took COVID as, as horrible and as tragic as it was. From a business perspective, we wanted to make sure we turned that challenge into an opportunity uh, and, and looked at it from that point of view. And we, we, we did well with that. Um, second part of the question, moving forward, as far as the office is concerned, I, I feel the future for Indigo Swan is a hybrid model. 
Uh, we're back in the office on Tuesday, Wednesdays and Thursdays. Uh, and we work from home on a Monday and a Friday. As I like to say, roll out of bed on a Monday and you can log off on a Friday and already be at home. Um, so having our Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays in the office work really nicely for us. That, that's the opportunity to collaborate. That's the opportunity to do the team meetings uh, and anything else that, you know, two or, two or more members of the team need to work on face to face together. So for me, that hybrid model will work well. And I think flexibility with that in the workplace is going to be key for people that are looking for jobs and opportunities in the future and we obviously want to make sure that we're embracing that and, and leading by example yeah i think that's the because you know pre this if anyone had said to me can i can i you know i'm i'm going to offer everyone to um three days a week in the office and yeah. two days a week at home you would you would have looked at them like they were home. <laughs> oh, it, just, it, just, it just didn't happen but <laughs> but now that we've been forced into it and you know and, and you know okay productivity may dip at times and things yeah. like that we just need to learn how to deal with it you know yeah i think so and you, you, at the same time as a bit you know as a bit business owner business leader you've got you, you've got to trust your people you know if if you're recruiting people that you don't trust you probably have to ask yourself the question why did you recruit them in the yeah, first place yeah, yeah absolutely. So, you know if you've got that culture of trust within your business uh and then it goes once you know first value is happiness first you want you want people to be happy and you've got that trust that supports the happiness then you should be able to allow them to work from home you know we probably wouldn't have done it unless we were forced into it don't get me wrong but by being forced into it and having that trust within the workforce, there are definitely some positives that have come out of it. And it's now for me making the best of both working at home and working in the office for, for everybody involved. Yeah, sure, sure. So you've been with Indigo Swamp for over 11 years. Yeah. Do you remember your first day and how has the business developed over the years? Yeah, I, yeah, I do. Um, Cool. It's 11 years. feels like more than that. But yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, I joined Indigo Swan during a recession. Um, I, I Historically, I worked for a finance company uh, based in Norwich, where Indigo Swan is based as well. We were, we were a finance broker. We did mortgages, loans, etc. Uh, then the recession kicked in. And um, that was a difficult time for many. Um, I survived the, the cull, but I knew there was an opportunity to maybe look at doing something different. And uh, the Indigo Swan opportunity uh, through my cousin Emily uh, came up and, and I jumped it because I said to myself, you know, whatever I do next after the recession, I thought, whatever I do next, I need to do something that people are always going to need. Uh, yeah. and people are always going to need energy. And, you know, I remember my first day, we were in a bit of a wood chip office in a, in a service building in Norwich. There was five of us in what can only be explained as like a box room. Um, and, you know, we, we had to do a bit of everything. You know, we were a startup business. We had to go out and find business. We had to you know, gather the relevant information from the energy suppliers. We had to sell the contracts to the customers, process them, you know, make sure they'd gone live and everything. You know, we were doing a little bit of everything, the, the five of us that were there at the time. Um, but it was an exciting time, I think, being in the startup business. And I say this to people I know who get into business now. Whilst it's very stressful, there's a lot of worry, it's very hard days. At the same time, it is very exciting. And I think from my, from my first day onwards, I was excited about the potential of Indigo Swan. I was excited about what we could achieve and excited about how, in my opinion, we could, we could hopefully help to change our industry, which is not always looked at in the best light. Uh, yeah. Sadly, that is due to some rogue companies out there doing, doing what we do. And we, we felt we had an opportunity to do it in a much more open, honest uh, and transparent way. So my excitement that was there on day one 11 years ago is still there, if not even more so today um and i feel we've, we've we've had a positive run and we we will continue to hopefully grow and uh have even more positive days ahead yeah good good that's excellent and how have you personally developed over that time so professionally and personally i suppose from a development point of view i mean you talk about you talk about wanting to be the best manager and leader that you can be so how is how have you grown over that period of time oh uh, yeah i think it's interesting i mean like yeah, I was lucky. I was lucky in my previous previous company, the finance company I talked about. I was, previous, I was lucky to be in some leadership roles there. Um, but then coming to Indigo Swan, you know, I had to I had to take a step back. I had to just get back to the shop floor. And I think what was interesting for me in my journey was, you know, going from a leadership position to then getting back on the shop floor again uh, mm -hmm. and building something from the ground up to then getting back to a leadership position in the future was my biggest learning. Almost came in that period of time in the middle. You know, because I had a time to, as a leader, you sometimes run out of time to reflect uh, and, you, and you run out of time to think about what you've done and what you could have done better. And, you know, for me, having that period of time in the middle where I wasn't actually responsible for anybody other than what I was doing in the business, 
um, really gave me an opportunity to reflect on my leadership journey up until that point uh, and gave me some stuff to really sort of think about when, when that opportunity arose again in the future. Um, so so that, that was a big thing for me professionally. Um, and as a leader of people as well, being able to get in at the grassroots, so to speak, and do all of the different roles that now we have different people in the business doing you know, just really helps you with your experience and really helps you with knowledge and understanding and, you know, allows you to be a good leader and allows me in my case now to be a good managing director because I always say there's a lot of accidental leaders in the world mm -hmm. where they've become a leader because they were really good at their job. Yeah. But that's fine. But do they actually have the skill set to, to, to be a good leader? You know, you might find that you actually, the average salesman is actually a better leader because they've got the relevant traits that you that you need. So, you know, for me, it was nice to have the experience of all these different types of roles uh, in order to be able to have that experience when it came to leading the team and then now leading the company uh, in the future. And that was a that was a vital period of time over those sort of initial two to three years of the business. Uh, personally, yeah, I mean, I wasn't in a great happy place back then, 11 years ago. Um, I, you know, like I said, the recession was on, that, that, that relationship ended poorly with my previous company um for full transparency i'd got divorced i was overweight it was it wasn't great um you know now you know i'm married to a wonderful wonderful harrier we've just had a baby so we've got a six month old now a little boy called sebastian um you know i'm manager director of, of of a successful energy consultancy that i believe is doing amazing things um and i'm in a very happy place and you know if i look back 11 years i'm i almost don't recognize who that person was so Forever thankful to the opportunity that, that Indigo Swan has given me, not not just professionally, but also how it has boosted my life personally as well. Ah, brilliant, brilliant. That's great. That sounds sounds brilliant. Um, so Indigo Swan is very focused on sustainability. Yeah. Why did you go down this route? What successes have you had, and where do you see this going in the future? Yeah, of course. I mean, to be perfectly honest, Brian, you can't ignore it. <laughs> you know, we, we, you know. In all fairness, we're, we're you know we're an energy consultancy. You know we 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 call ourselves energy enthusiasts. You know we are we are enthusiastic about energy. So for me, the sustainable piece just comes naturally, and we have to be talking about it, and we want to be talking about it. You know we, we want to be out there being you know one of the one of the companies within our sector that are, are promoting sustainability, promoting green energy. You know and 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 making sure people are having a think about it. Um, for me, you know, I want the world to be a better place for the next generation. Uh, yeah. and, and one of the ways of that being the case is, is through being sustainable and, you know, through generating your own power, if you can, through the use of the wind or through the use of the sun, um, you know, and all the other things, you know, through electric vehicles and different things like that, you know, all of these different types of technology are going to make the world a better place for the next generation. And, you know, if for me, we as a company and me personally can play a part in that and we can talk about it and offer thought leadership and set an example, um, then that's something that we most definitely want to be doing. Um, I think sustainability, whilst it's been around for a while and everyone's on a net zero journey to 2050, you know, I think there's a lot of unanswered questions out there. Uh, I feel, think, still think there's a lot of knowledge gaps and things like that. And I think for me, it's probably the early part of this journey. You know, we're having great conversations with clients at the moment. And there's another question that you might ask later that I can, that I can shed some more light on that. Um, but for me, it's about having, it's about having an option for all of our clients when it comes to anything they need help on when it comes to sustainability. Whether that's they need green energy, we can provide it. If they want to have a wind farm installed, then we can provide it. You know, whatever it might be from a sustainability point of view, I want to make sure that we've got in-house experts or we've got partners that we work with who can offer a, a great service around it because there's no doubting it in my mind that as we go between now and, and, and up to 20, 2030 and 2050 to the race to net zero, um, sustainability is, is going to be at the top of a lot of businesses' agenda. Uh, and I want Indigo Swan to make sure they're there to help them every step of the way. Well, good. No, I, you're, you're right. I think... Um, it is the beginning of the journey, um, and lots of people are kind of waking up and thinking about it now. Mm. Whereas it's been a, it's been something that's been talked about for many years. Yeah. So, but it, but it certainly does seem to be that that way. Um, so, and this might come back to your sustainability stuff you were talking about. But is there a project in your career that's interested you the most? Yeah, I mean, for the, you know, I, I, knowing, you know, what you guys do and what we do, you know, I, I do love working with the property sector in Scotland. I really do. Um, I, I, I love the challenges that have come with that. 
you know, you know, whether it be the, the size of their portfolio, whether it be issues through their residence, or whatever it may be, you know, finding great value for them. You know, just being a really good partner with those types of business I've loved. I've loved being able to work with, with, with companies in Scotland. I love coming to Scotland. Uh, me and my colleague Amy, Brian, that you know as well, you know, we, we enjoy our trips there. And it's it's something that, you know, we worked with our first property factor probably within about the first couple of years of us being set up and, you know, thankfully, from there, we've then be able to make lovely connections and relationships with more of them. And it's just a part of our business that we all love. You know, we, we've employed people now that specifically work on that sector. Uh, and I find it, you know, I do find it extremely rewarding. And I love, you know, I love talking to different people um, and, and, and working with some great businesses in Scotland. You know, out, outside of that, you know, for me personally, the education sector is something that I've, I've been extremely passionate about. Um, we work with a lot of academy trusts uh, and private schools and colleges, et cetera. Um, and for me, there's, there's, there's the one side of that, as far as our service is concerned, which is, you know, helping them to secure their energy. And, you know, for a lot of them now, trying to make sure they're greener. Um, but there's also the other side where I will, you know, as part of our service, I offer to go into schools and talk to the kids and do assemblies and uh, go into a science class on energy and give tips on how they can save energy at home. And, you know, we just we just offer that as part of being one of the Ghost One's clients. You know, even myself or, or Amy or someone else, you know, we can bring value to these schools in other ways, we hope. It's not just about procuring their energy. It is about going in there and maybe educating their students or teachers, whatever it may be. And I really love that. And, and, and I love to give back where I can and, Especially in the education sector, you know, I, 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 I didn't get a degree. I, you know, I, I, I went to university for a year and that, that was quite frankly enough for me. <laughs> um, but, you know, and, 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 and that's, that goes for a lot of our workforce. And I, and I love being able to go into schools and say, look, you know, I'm not going to bash university, not at all, because otherwise schools wouldn't have me in school. But, <laughs> but at the same time, there's, there's lots of other options. You know, what ultimately what you, what you want is some life experience and, you know, you want to get out there and if you want to go in straight into work, then that's great because you can learn just as much going into work at 16, 17 years old as you can going to university, depending on what you want to do. Yeah. So being able to work with schools from an energy procurement side, but then to be able to give back by talking to the kids and stuff like that as part of the Indigo Swan offering, uh, I get a huge amount of uh, joy and, and, and satisfaction out of. So, yeah, that, that's another project that has, that's brought me great happiness over the years. Right. Okay. Good. Yeah. No. No. That 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 is interesting. I always, I, I often have the debate about the whole university thing. I mean, I did go to college for a couple of years, but yeah. um, I I learned to be um, a, a programmer. I guess I did I, I did computing, but but I have to profess to never being a, or right. in my opinion, never being a great developer. Um, but um, but you know you but but I guess it helped me. Figure I, out I, I'm not going to say yeah. Work, you know? I'm not going to bash it. Don't get me wrong. Like I say, people, if people want to, I always say, if people want to be doctors, teachers, lawyers, whatever, then fine, you've got to go because that's part of your journey. Yeah, if you're absolutely. not sure what you want to do, if you're not sure yeah. what you want to do, don't be afraid about doing an apprenticeship. Don't be afraid about getting into an office place and working your way up. You know, myself and a lot of my colleagues did that. You know, we got into work at, you know, 17, 18 years old and, and worked our way up in a company that we started that, you know, it's just as good a way as learning uh, about life and business as yeah. going to university would be so just just look at the options yeah i think to be fair i look at my children and see i mean my eldest is in his fourth year at edinburgh uni studying yeah. maths and my youngest is in portsmouth in the army so yeah. you know you cannot you cannot get too too, too yeah so um so yeah no i it's it's the you just got to take the path you know that 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 that, that you want to take you know so absolutely so, so, so bringing this back to the, I know you've mentioned property management, that's yeah. obviously how we know each other. Um, and one of the things that we, we, we kind of want to talk about on here as well is what people from kind of different industries or different parts of the, the makeup or sorry, what's the phrase I'm looking for? The different stakeholders in providing um, yeah. for property management companies to provide their service. You obviously being an integral part of that to to a lot of, in fact, we share a, a huge amount of clients in um, in the UK. Yeah. So uh, what when you think about the future of property management, um, what do you see? And this could be, you know, from any point of view, your point of view, um, with Indigo Swan or, or, yeah. um, or personally. I think I think for me it's overall generally I, I should imagine it's going to become even more demanding um I, I, I think residents are just have to find they're just forever wanting more 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 um so I think there's going to probably be a lot expected from property management companies going forward you know even though there is already that's probably just likely to increase 
Um, and I think, you know, the companies just need to be equipped with the relevant, you know, skill sets and experience and relevant partners like yourselves and ourselves in order to support with the relevant different decisions and, and options that they have. Um, and I think, you know, partnerships and relationships with, with, with companies like Seabell and Indigo Swan are, for me, are integral in, in, in the future of that because you can't do everything yourself. You know, we, you know, we've always said we're, we're in Ghost One, we're an energy consultant. We don't try to be experts in anything else. That's that's yeah. what we're good at. Um, and, and with property management and property factor, you know, there, there will be stuff within their business they're great at, but there will also be stuff they need to be on other partners and stuff for like like ourselves. So, yeah, I think it's going to become more demanding. I think from an Indigo Swan point of view, for me, I just think there's going to be more of a want and a desire around being green. Um, yeah. I think residents are probably going to put pressure on as far as making sure maybe there's a green provider to the communal areas. Um, there, we've already had inquiries uh, around EV charging points. Okay. Um, you know, more residents are now wanting EV charging points in if they've, if they've got you know, if they've got car parks within their block. You know, more people have got electric cars now, so they need something within their block that they can they can charge their car in. Um, so like I say, we're definitely seeing an increase in inquiries around that um so so that's quite interesting i think that will just continue to increase and and anything really like around the sustainability model that we talked about i i, I do think it's going to become something that that residents are going to pick up on um and i think as a as, as a as, as the uk as a whole and scotland etc you know we are we are now seeing more people put a focus on it in their personal lives and, and they're making changes and i think covid had a knock-on effect to that you know people are now going to farm shops when they didn't even know farm shops were a thing you know, people, people, people are doing different things that they had to do during COVID, and you know, green energy and sustainability is a big part of that. And you know, if you've got a block of a couple of hundred residents, there's no doubt in my mind that a very high percentage of those might start putting the pressure on and saying, "Look, we need to be, we need to be more sustainable as a block." Uh, and then that obviously falls down into the into the property companies in order for them to look at that and do something about it. And like I said before, we want to be here to make sure that we can support with that and and offer an option for whatever whatever comes our way. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think I would agree with that. I, I think from the EV um, sort of side of things, though, that there has to be a a kind of movement forward in infrastructure fairly yeah. rapidly. I mean, the area of Glasgow that I live in, and I, 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 my last car was a hybrid, and the last yeah. and the area of Glasgow I live in does not have um, a public charging point. No. And, and I and I can't and I can't get my car to my house, so you know it, it, it's just crazy. So I had to literally go and park it somewhere else and pay yeah. over and above over and above, my, over and above my parking permit for my area to actually charge my car. So I think there's a lot of movement on infrastructure there, required as well. There is, and I think that's why I said, like I said before, it's almost the start of the journey. What I think the problem is is the press uh, and everything else that comes with that. You know, shout very loudly about stuff that. I suppose the country isn't quite ready for or the countries aren't yeah. quite ready for you know like ev is a great example of that you know you've got you've got them throwing electric vehicles out all over the place now offering great you know better deals on them and all this sort of stuff but as you said brian the infrastructure is not there you yeah. know most of them when you go up to about two to three hundred miles if you're lucky you know you've then probably got to leave your house two hours before you would normally have to do because you're going to have to stop the charge it somewhere on the way yeah. you know and, and and that's not that's not viable so people are sort of probably having an electric car maybe as their second car but they'll have a normal car you know yeah, which, is, you know, which is just defeats the purpose doesn't it yeah, yeah. which defeats the purpose because it's like you don't want to have you know if you've still got a, another vehicle a petrol vehicle or whatever it sort of defeats the purpose you want if you're gonna have an electric car you want an electric car you want to be able to take it and use it everywhere yeah. um so there is definitely some work to do but i think obviously because the press etc shout so much about it you know people are clamoring for it and wanting it before we're ready for it yeah. Um, so I think there is there is indeed some work to do, but fingers crossed. You know, fingers crossed over the next few years, but we'll we'll, we'll start to see that improve, uh, and I think we'll start to see more electric vehicles and more charging points out there, um, and and fingers crossed that that will be a positive change. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally agree, totally agree. Right, so we've now got to the point where Jax um, comes in and asks you amazing um, some questions. So Jax, over to you. Hi James, so we've got our three quirky questions that we like to, to finish off. Um, so the first one is, what's your biggest failure across your entire career and what did you learn from it? Oh, where do I start, Jax? No, I'm <laughs> oh, how, how, how long have you got? No, I'm um, I don't know, for me it's interesting. I, I, you could call it a failure. I looked at it as a failure. So interestingly, um, probably about what, about six six years ago now or so, I, I actually got turned down for a promotion at Indigo Swan, believe it or not. 
um, <laughs> and that was an interesting period of time. And I, I do quite, I tell you, I talk about it quite openly, and I think there's a lot of people can take from it. But you know, we we'd got to that point as a business where we where we needed to to have somebody who was who, a commercial director internally. Uh, I, I applied for that as it would have been a step up at the time from where I was in the business, and, 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 and I was unsuccessful. Um, you know, the person that came in, in in turn was not successful, but what I learned from it and the opportunity I had from it actually worked out best in the end. I, I could have quite easily taken that, looked at it, and gone, you know what, maybe my time at Indigo Swan is not meant to be. Maybe it's time to, maybe it's time to sort of move on. Mm -hmm. um but i felt instead well okay well i'm not going to do that so what can i do and off the back of it i said okay well if i'm not going to do that then what i want to do is i want to grab hold of the people management within the business i want to grab hold of, of managing the staff that we have the sponsors that we have day to day uh develop them and show what i can do from a coaching leadership perspective uh and i was given the opportunity to go and do that uh, and i did that and i and i was successful in that uh, and allowed the business to grow through me focusing in on that area. And I think by doing that, it, it allowed me to it allowed me to learn a lot during that time. I probably improved my commercial awareness. I think I probably improved on the areas that, if I'm honest with myself, I may have been a bit short on uh, at that time, um, which I needed to get better at. Um, and, and I did all of that. And and if that if I if it had been an, if it had been a yes at that time. I don't know if I'd be sitting here talking to you today, if I'm honest, because I don't know if I'd have learned what I did. And whilst it was very difficult to accept at the time, the the lessons that came from it served me well, allowed me to impress, gain the trust uh, and the faith of, of, the, of the team, uh, and then allowed me to move through to commercial director and through to managing director. And I think to have the to have the whole team be understanding and supportive of, of, of that and to now be, you know, invested in Indigo Swan, invested in me uh, and, and for the company to be in a position it is in today. So to me, that's probably the one. Brilliant. Yes, yeah, it's, it's probably good that you've gone through that from a team perspective. And yeah. People perspective, you know, when people have seen you take that on the chin and then yeah. move forward and you've got that story to tell to them now as well, which is... I think so. Resilience, resilience is so important, and I mean, there's never been a more important time than over the last eighteen months, I would say. But you know, being resilient um, is is such an important trait for people to have because you know everything's not always going to go your way. For me, it's about yeah, what do you like? You say what do you what do you learn from your failures? What do you learn from your mistakes? And and what can you do to make that a positive uh, experience and a positive happening in the future? Yeah. Great. So our uh, second quirky question is, if you ruled the world for a day, what would you do? Wow. <laughs> it's a big question, isn't it? Now, you uh, see, for me, for me, I, I ideally today, I'd probably turn back the clock 18 months. Yeah. I, I think if I was perfectly honest, I'd probably turn back the clock 18 months and assume COVID never happened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that would be a positive. W without dwelling on the COVID piece, I, I, I would probably create uh a, a christmas every quarter because i love christmas christmas is my christmas is my favorite time of year yeah, it? but but it is only one day don't get me wrong you have the festivities leading up and i probably like the lead up to christmas more than the actual day but i i think a christmas every quarter you can call it what you want one can be christmas you know and the others can be called something else but a christmas like day where you know there's a little bit of small gift giving but you just all get together as a family or as friends or whatever not at work, you know, you've got some time to celebrate something, I, I would probably introduce a quarterly Christmas. Nice. Yeah, that's yeah. an interesting idea. Why don't you? Yeah, no, <laughs> okay, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> we can exchange photographs. <laughs> yeah, like, we will. Do you know what? I might, I might launch it. We might do an Indigo Swan quarterly Christmas. I'll let you know. <laughs> I'll send you some pictures. Brilliant. Uh, so when you're 70 and look back at your life and all these Christmases that you've had, yeah. <laughs> Will you be glad you did um, or feel proud of something you've either done already or something that you want to do? Yeah, somebody asked me recently, what what what, what would you want your like legacy to, to be? That's quite a big question for me. I'm you know I'm 38 years old, so I like to think I've got a little bit of time to go. Um, but for me, my answer to it is quite simple, is for anybody that I've ever worked with, when they get to the point that they have grandchildren, and their grandchildren ask them about what they used to do. They say that they used to work for a guy called James Groves, and it was the best time they'd ever had. 
And if they can say that and they can tell their grandkids that, then I feel that I have succeeded and that I feel I have brought value to as many people's lives as I possibly can um, and given them a happy and caring working environment um, and career that they look back on so fondly that they tell their grandkids that, yeah, that, that was what life was like working for James Graves. Oh, that's nice. So that's that really, yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. And how's fatherhood going? Oh my god, it? yeah, no, it's great. <laughs> it, I don't. It's similar. It's been six months. It's been it, it's been amazing. It's something that my, my wife and I we've had our journey to to get to parenthood to be fair over the last four years or so. And uh, when COVID hit, we didn't necessarily think it was going to happen, and and then it did. Amazingly, it did. And um, it's you know it's it's been absolutely wonderful, and I love it. And little Sebi is 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 just amazing, and you know, just being able to spend as much time together as we can. You know, it's now that thing of, it was lovely at the beginning because I was at home all the time and now I'm in the office three days a week and, you know, you, miss, you feel like you miss out on different bits and pieces. But yeah. you know, just making sure I make the time when I get home to have a bit of time with him. I, I, I take, you know, I take weekday, weekend mornings and let, let Mrs. Groves have a, have a lay-in uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, and take, take the mornings and have some fun with him. Uh, on the Saturday, Sunday mornings, which I really enjoy, and yeah, it's, it's, it was it's been an extremely rewarding experience and something I always wanted. I always wanted to be a dad, but it's it's been it's been even better and even more rewarding than I ever thought it would be. Lovely, you know? oh, that's brilliant. Um, listen, um, really appreciate. Who? Oh, excuse me, I'll do that again. <laughs> really appreciate you coming on, James. That's absolutely fabulous. Great to talk to you as well. We haven't spoken to each other for about eighteen months. Yeah. And with any luck, with any luck. Um, There'll be a conference next year. Let's hope so. In, that is in that is face to face, and then we can grab another um, Jack Downs and Cook. Brian, we will get on the JD absolutely. Jacks, if you want to come along, please do. Love to. Brian, <laughs> thanks very much. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much for having me on.